Oh no. All three Beards Media podcasts originate from the Gravitate Coworking Studio, sponsored by Revelton Distilling Company. Welcome back to In the Side of the Storm, where we talk all things cyclones. We're coming to you live from the Gravitate Coworking Studios and sponsored by our friends Revelton Distillery out of Osceola, Iowa. I'm Dave Larson here with my cyclone storm team partner, Marcus Spicer, and we hope that our other partner, Brent Curvey, will join us. It's been a discombobulated evening with a lot of uh, fun, <laughs> interesting football games on. Marcus, how are Great, you? Dave. I'm doing well, Dave. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You know, that was a heck of a finish there between the, the Chiefs and our guy, uh, A.J. Klein with the Buffalo yeah. Bills. I was hoping that the Bills would pull it out up there. It wasn't meant to be, though. Yeah, that was a good game. It's been it's been a, a great, you know, this is the time of the year where, where the games really, really start to get really competitive and, you know, really good games that you sit down and cannot move. We've we postponed this the show for the last couple of minutes waiting for for the end of the game. But man, that was a close win. We knew it was gonna be a good win. Um anytime, you know, Pat Mahomes is on the field and then Josh Allen is just a total elite quarterback. And it was just a, a, a duel to the end. Yeah, it was. And and again, our guy EJ Klein, former Iowa State linebacker, they basically pulled him off of his uh couch. I think I read somewhere that his yeah. RV was packed, ready for vacation, and he was getting ready to leave. <laughs> and they called him up and said, hey, we could use you for a few games. What do you think? Yeah, that was big time. He, you know, he came in and played extremely well. It was – it was. I, I'm sure it was a lot of fun to to be able to relive that, that moment of the playoffs and things like that again. But, damn, I mean, it was so close. I mean – you know, that, that wide right is, is going to haunt them again, you know, in the history. Yeah. But, man, that was a good, good game. It was, it was a game that I definitely enjoyed watching from the start to the finish. And I haven't seen AJ's numbers for this game, but last weekend in the super wild card weekend, I think he had somewhere around 11 tackles. <laughs> so leading the, the Bills, which I think is pretty amazing considering he just come in midweek. I, I don't remember right. – it wildcard weekend being called super wildcard weekend to me it's always going to be wildcard weekend we didn't call this the super divisional round uh but nonetheless i thought this weekend had a better set of games than last weekend yeah that, that first well i guess you know the, the cowboys fan will argue against that but but hey hey be gentle. you know i know you a cowboys fan but <laughs> um I, you know, the the first week is, you know, a, a lot of crazy things to happen. Uh, disconnect. Oh, you're on. You, you sound great. And, of course, hey. your Detroit okay. Lions. Um, you know, the first week, good. a lot of. Your Detroit Lions are uh, doing up, well. Our, our guy, David Montgomery, is back. Uh, last weekend, he rushed for a touchdown, and this weekend, Lions pulled out the victory. They are now one win away from the Super Bowl. Any thoughts on that? If if the Lions go, do you see yourself going up to that game up in Vegas? Oh, I, I mean, if, if that's that's something I'll, I will absolutely try to do. I, mean, I can't promise it, but, um, man, that will be a big game to be able to get to for sure. 
you know, they're, they're probably already selling tickets or trying to. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I that, that'll so, be a tough game to probably get to. Well, and we've got a couple of Cyclones that are still in the game. So, uh, Dave Montgomery, of course, for the Lions. Face, facing off against his former teammate, Brock Purdy. They play last night. Purdy's numbers weren't all that spectacular, but I tell you what, on that last drive, I think he went like five or six, six or seven, something like that. Had a key run um, up until I think he rushed to about the 20-yard line or so. And he, he popped back up with that chest out. And I know, and I saw him like, that's our Brock Purdy. He's back. You know, he's, he's on it. He's zoned in. Yeah. And sure enough, 49ers ended up scoring and, and pulling out the victory. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he gets a uh, you know a lot of flack you know right now, but you you still got to understand he still is a young quarterback in this league and he's learning. I mean, the team is good and he that's it's a lot of responsibility to lead um, to get this far in the playoffs and to continue to play well. You know, you can have up and down games, but you know, I'm sure he's. Glad that he got the W, then throwing for four or 500 yards and getting the L. So that's the most important thing. You know, that last drive is what's the most important for him. They were able to advance, and um, we'll see him next week. Well, and he's in such a key position. You know, obviously, quarterback of any NFL team, you're the guy with all the cameras on you. What's that like being a young player in any league, in any type of role? And really being seen as that leader you you were faced that coming in as a lottery pick with the bulls what's that like being a young just a kid at that point and you're playing with guys that have been in the league for 10 12 years well it, it's definitely a change um you know just trying to carve your your own identity um for me, it's a little different than what Brock is going up against because that would be like equivalent to being the point guard of the team. Um, so that's way more important than, you know, what, you know, a, a small forward or power forward would do on the court. But um, it's, you know, it's, it's very confusing. Um, you know, you have some success and then you think early on, you know, you figured it out. Um, and then, you know, you, 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 found, you find out that it's not as, as easy as you may have thought now. So it's it's a roller coaster up up and down, up and down, up and down until you get to an even kill and you're starting to settle in and, and make the plays that you should make. And you know, you just hope and pray that you can continue to play at the level. Well, what's amazing, he's still on that he, he's on a rookie deal. I think he's making eight hundred and fifty, nine hundred thousand dollars, which is yeah. don't get me wrong, that's really good money, but in mm -hmm. comparison to the others that are in the playoffs, it's pennies. Right, right. I, I mean, it is. Um, you know, we're not going to say the 49ers did him any favors by drafting him. It's just not signing him as a undrafted free agent. But um, you know, he he was able to to come in, get drafted, um, compete against some some good quarterbacks that we felt at the time, and was able to to win that spot. And so, um, even though you know three quarters plus of a million dollars is a lot of money, but for his caliber of player. At a quarterback is, is definitely pennies on the dollar. So he's proving what he can do. Uh, we're, we're definitely hoping and, and wishing him luck to, to have a, a substantial contract that's, you know, conducive to what he's worth in the market. And uh, hopefully, hopefully is there in, in uh, San Francisco. And he still has success there. So next weekend, next Sunday evening is uh, the big game then between the Lions and the 49ers on the a AFC side. Uh, we still have Charlie Kolar, who is uh, tied in for the Ravens. He uh, actually had a catch last night uh, in their victory, 34 to 10. Um, it looks like uh, we could have a couple of Cyclones playing in the Super Bowl if uh, if that plays out, where the where the Ravens defeat the Chiefs. Any predictions on or any guesses on who you think will win between those four teams? Again, the AFC we've got the Ravens now and the Chiefs and um, the 49ers and Lions. Um, well, well, I, I think the Lions are playing extremely well, you know, even though they got to go on the road. I think uh, Jared Goff has, has, you know, this focus this right now that a lot of people, you know, didn't see early on. Um, a lot of people knew that he had, but he had some, you know, rough times in, the, in his career. And, and, you know, they moved him to Detroit. They moved Stafford out to L.A. 
Stafford had an instant success, you know, going out to L.A., so a lot of people wrote him off. So, you know, he was able to to settle down and, and get the focus in his back, and he's playing absolutely phenomenal ba- uh, football. Excuse me. Playing phenomenal f- football. And so I think the way he's rolling um, is going to be a dogfight. Um, it just depends on, you know, how things turn out to, to what, you know, the defense in, in, uh, in San Francisco can do against him. Um, you know, that's that's kind of hard up in the air to to go for one of the two because we got Montgomery and we got, you know, Brock, you know, going, going against each other. So uh, that's going to be a tough one. That's that's one of those neutral things where you just got to sit and, and watch and hope for a great fireworks. And then, then you know, the, the Ravens game is going to be a, a nice one too. It's definitely going to be a duel. Um, I think Baltimore may come out with this one. You know, you can never really go against Pat Mahomes because once he gets into the playoffs, he does the weirdest, you know, things to to pull out a win like he showed tonight. But uh, I think Lamar Jackson is is on one of those projections as well to where, you know, he's really focused on getting that trophy. Um, He's not really caring about the MVP or anything like that. He's gotten everything else that he wanted and he wants that uh, Super Bowl trophy. So getting there is definitely something that, that he's focused on. Was on, so I think the Ravens are going to pull that one out. Well, and I I was able to watch part of that game uh, yesterday myself. We, we went to the Iowa Wolves game uh, downtown, and Cyclone great uh, Gabe Kalsher was playing for the Capital City team against the Wolves. So that was uh, fun to watch, and it was had my eyes kind of split between the what was going on in the court, and what was going on TV. Um. It, since our mm-hmm. last show, uh, uh, back to the college game, uh, transfer portal news, Deshaun Hanica, tight end, uh, did not play last year. He got uh, involved in the uh, all of the online betting scheme, and uh, he's decided to transfer to University of Kansas, which uh, Brent Curvey knows a little bit about Kansas now. And then Darrell Simmons, who was the uh, offensive mm-hmm. lineman, has decided to join him in Kansas. Um, also, oh, wow. we were, yeah, we had some scares last week, though, too, where Matt Campbell was rumored to at least be having some discussions with uh, Washington Huskies. <laughs> a little bit of a concern there. And uh, do you have any thoughts on some of those rumors that we heard coming out of uh, Washington? Um, well, you know, we definitely feel like he's he's that tip, uh, type of coach um, for a program like that. But well, we also, you know, love what he's done for Iowa State, and and mostly we'll, we'll recommend for him to stay, or want for him to stay with us and uh, continue to lead us to, uh, you know, great victories and things of that nature. But you know, I really don't get into too much of the rumors because you never know, you know, where they're coming from, who's, you know, starting the rumors, who's trolling, who's just trying to drum up something. So. Until everything is, you know, signed and then final, then I really don't pay much attention to it. Like I said, other than the fact of just hoping, you know, he remains with us. I, I was a little bit surprised to learn that he had a look at that job a couple of years ago. That that took me a little bit by surprise. And, hmm. you know, you were faced with similar situations during your tenure at Iowa State on the basketball side with Coach Floyd and, and constantly being looked at as a, Mm-hmm. opportunity to jump to the NBA Did, as players. Is that something you were, you openly talked about or were you aware of it? I know the social media things have changed quite a bit uh, since then. Yeah. Yeah. Social media has really amped up all of that to where, you know, kids in high school are really, really talking about it more. Even kids that are nowhere on the cusp or even possibly even making it. But, you know, when I was in college, I, I was really focused on being a student athlete um, until, you know, the unfortunate situations when my parents' house caught on fire my junior year <clears throat> that made me ultimately decide to leave after my junior year. I was coming back for my senior year. You know, um, the house, the accident occurred before uh, the end of the season, and my parents just didn't even tell me about it. You know, they let me focus on the season and finishing out the year. And then, you know, I was told about it after it was over. And then, you know, I, I knew it was the time to you know, be able to help my family in the situation that, that we were currently in. But, 
if if the, if it wasn't for that, then I was coming back for my, you know, because then it was, you know, playing basketball, being a, a college athlete, and we had gotten so close and we were coming back with the same team. You know, I wanted to win the national championship, and that was, you know, still something that's, you know, a, a sore thorn in my side, and and I definitely was thinking about coming back for sure, my junior, my senior to to complete that task. So, um, but now it's just so much crazier than than you ever like. You have to almost you almost have to focus the kids on focus on playing basketball and getting better at their craft and not thinking about, you know, because you never know what can happen, uh, you know, twisting an ankle, torn ACL, broken elbow, whatever could could occur in, in between that time. And so for me, I just, you know, focus on, on playing basketball and being a student. So no reading the big peach, there's no activity there where players, you guys on a long road trip, were talking about coach Floyd and some of those rumors at the time. Um, no, no, because because it's back then, and of course we're aging ourselves. But that back then there was a lot of newspapers, you know, and so you know you get into the newspaper, or you might grab a newspaper, and it may have the sports session taken out of it. And it, it's not, I mean, like now, you know, you can get alert on the phone, and it's going to tell you exactly what's going on, what somebody said. So if you just avoided the newspaper and just focused on, we knew, you know. We we were seeing Jerry Cross a lot <laughs> in the stands <laughs> and things like that doing some oh, really? games. But yeah, but you just never know what one way or the other. He could have been there looking at players or whatever. I mean, ultimately, you know, the next couple of years, you know, he was there and, and I was in Chicago. So you can never know what, what a scout or a GM or owner is doing in the stands. So we just really never paid attention to it. We really didn't know until he called us to the uh, basketball office and told us, you know, himself that he was making that decision to go. And, you know, the rest is history. Hmm. Well, this is a good time. Let's go ahead and take a break. I want to jump into some basketball, both men's and women's. Uh, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Revelton Distillery. Why take the best corn in the world and make it into fuel when you could make it into whiskey? That's the question that launched Revelton, Iowa's most visible and fastest growing distillery. Owners Rob and Christy Taylor embrace the grain-to-glass philosophy, sourcing ingredients locally and overseeing on-premises production and bottling at their facility in Osceola. One sip and you'll agree that Revelton's handcrafted whiskeys, gins, and vodkas are the best you've ever tasted. And with the launch of their rye whiskey, made with 100% Iowa-grown rye and corn, and their new bourbon coming soon, there's more Revelton to love than ever. Iowa's own Revelton Distillery. ReveltonDistillery.com The great thing about working from home is working from home. The worst thing is working from home, especially for face-to-face -face collaborations with customers and coworkers. And let's face it, coffee shop meetings are neither private nor professional. So skip the trip to Starbs and investigate Gravitate co-working space. For more than 10 years, Gravitate has provided large and small office and conference spaces perfect for hosting meetings, workshops, or other events, as well as private phone booths for confidential conversations. Plus, all spaces include secure fiber internet, free coffee, and access to a kitchenette. All you need is your laptop. Gravitate does the rest. And renting space at Gravitate is surprisingly affordable. An hour of office space costs about the same as venti caramel macchiatos and breakfast sandwiches for two. Daily and monthly rates are also available with no long-term commitment. Learn more at GravitateCoworking.com. That's GravitateCoworking.com. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a pivot. And our friend uh, Brent Curvey, welcome, Brent. Good to see you, what my up? friend. What up, what up, fellas? How y'all doing? What up, fam? Okay, we just got through some of the NFL chill, talk. Chill, how about you? Any thoughts on today's games? Man, I'm just glad to see like competitive football again. It just seems like some of that stuff was just so, you know, yeah. ho hum, and let's just make it through the season. Now it looks like guys are really trying to play for something. So this is like exciting times for me. Everybody, <laughs> nothing up. better than today and, and next weekend, is there? Oh no, I don't think so, man. I'm I'm excited about it. Get us a get us a cyclone in the Super Bowl. That's this right. Year. Well, we that's the hope. Uh, 
I, I think we've got three of the teams have Cyclones on, on, mm-hmm. on their team. I, I guess I haven't looked at the Chiefs roster. There's no one on there that I'm aware of that's that's a former Cyclone. I don't think so. Nobody active. Yeah, we no, had AJ so. Klein, who we talked a little bit about earlier, who is playing for Buffalo. I think we're. Yep. I, I certainly was cheering for him. No hesitations about that. So I guess we get another week of the Kelsey brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the fun group. Yeah. The fun group. I like the Kelsey brothers, though. They're all right. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> Well, Jason Kelsey was up there with his shirt off, and I think he was out in the parking lot pregame. Doing shirt shots, off. Doing shots you got to gotta support, man. You got to support your bro. Why not? You got Give to. credit. Yeah. Well, and he's retired. I don't, too. I don't know about in Buffalo without his shirt on, though. I mean, that's a little aggressive, but my man's retiring now. So that was really good. good. It's has, he, good. has he officially retired? Because I thought I heard he retired, but then he. He stepped back and said, "Hey, I want to give it a little bit of time, do the emotions of the loss, and and think through this a little bit longer." I mean, he he made the Pro Bowl this year. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was last year. Did he make it again this year though? Too going last year. I know he was an All Pro center this year. So no, it wasn't year, that, that pro, pro Bowl. That wasn't last year where he, where he when they lost when he said he's retiring and then he's going to think about it. No, he said it this year. Because I know, right I know he said it last. He said it yeah. this year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Apparently, he's walking around the locker room announcing that he was going to retire, and then the next day, thought a little bit more about it, and which is, which makes sense, right? Don't make an irrational decision and think about it because that's a that's a big decision you have to make. And yeah, we've seen a number of athletes don't, that will be time to retirement, right. and then they'll come back <laughs> a year later, right. mid season. Yeah. Yeah. For Michael. Right. Mm-hmm. We saw Michael do that too, right? Oh yeah, that's a different breed. Yeah, he did it. Too. He did. Yeah, he did. There's very <laughs> few that can do it and still still do it at a high level. That's, that's Gronk right. too, right? I think Gronk did the same thing. That's right. But, Gronk did do know, it. Yeah, There's very few guys that can do it. But all right, so we're gonna make a shift over to way. a little bit of basketball news. And since our last uh, episode, Cyclones. Had a heartbreaker, lost uh, at uh, to Oklahoma, and then came back and beat Houston, number two Houston. Milan uh, mm-hmm. Mon- Monchilovic. I'm going to say that I've had too much of this tonight, but Monchilovic <laughs> had that feet away shot that went in that was just sweet, and then he turned around this last game and had two or three of those. So that's become his patented shot there, that fade away. Uh, mm-hmm. But that ended up being the winner. And ironically, that was the game immediately following our episode of does Iowa State have that guy with a killer instinct that you can get the ball to that will make a tough shot? I, I think he, he answered that question for us. Oh, yeah. Marcus called it, man. Yeah. Like I said, I, I mean, I, 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 I've coached against that kid since, you know, he was in junior high. You know, junior high going. To, oh, did I lose you guys? Mm-mm. You're good. Still here. Still here. A little bit of a pause there, and then we we come back, and then that Saturday, so a week ago yesterday, Oklahoma State throttled them. That was the game that was delayed. We had all the weather up in Central Iowa. We had twelve foot or 12 inches of snow followed by another 12 inches of snow a day or two later i got so sick of shovel and brent i know you were tired of shoveling with that hip of yours it's awful and man. I, the, you were right the first time with the 12 foot though i don't yeah, it, felt 12, like it. It, it didn't feel nothing like no 12 inches that was at least a couple feet it's awful man and then oklahoma state had issues with their flight getting up here and getting out i think they were delayed out of I think they were flying from Stillwater to Oklahoma City. The Oklahoma City flight was delayed or they had troubles with their plane. So then there were, basically the game started two and a half hours late. Uh, Iowa State just came out and punched them in the mouth. And that seemed to, that was it. I mean, they looked like they did not want to be playing. They did not want to be here in the cold, which I don't think any of us were. Uh, but that, that then led us into the next game where at BYU, a loss to number 20 BYU, 
um, which I think we're looking forward to the return trip to Hilton because I think it'll be a little bit of a different situation. Late in that game, uh, Taman Lipsy injured his shoulder. Um, I think we saw some of the replays on that looked a little scary, and and then it was announced just prior to the tip off uh, yesterday against TCU that he was not going to play, which playing down at TCU, it's a little bit of a smaller uh, arena. Mm-hmm. That floor is a little kind of wild too, the way that it's set up that looks like a bunch of scales. Yeah. Born yeah. frog scales on the, on the, yeah. on the court. Um, but I, I tell you what, they pulled out that game. I, I don't know if you guys saw that game against TCU, but um, that, I think that's going to end up being a huge, huge win at the end of the year. If we can pull out one of those games on the road, that really helps if we can defend Hilton. And I know that we can defend Hilton well, well, but um, any thoughts on that, on that TCU victory and, and what that means going forward for the rest of the year? Well, I, I missed the first half of it. when I came home and started watching it. I think TC went on a run, so I made sure to cut it off. I feel like we were doing great before I started watching, so I was like, I'm not going to be the jinx that, that kills this. So I made sure to hop right on off. But, um, you know, I, I just hope that uh, Gilbert can kind of keep that same momentum when Lipsy does come back. Um, and I'm sure Marcus can 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 kind of tap into that. But uh, he seems like a, a talented kid with the rock in his hands, and he can, get, he can score it. Talk about attacking so, the basket. He knows how to attack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He can fill it up. So <laughs> look forward to seeing more of that. And then defensively, Iowa State um, held TCU. TCU turned the ball over 19 times. 19, not in the game, yeah. but that was the first half. And then yeah. set a Big 12 record by turning TCU over 27 <laughs> times for the entire game. That that that's a way to win games. And I think we have 36 points off of those turnovers. That's, that's a big difference too, when we can do something like that. Yeah. We'll still be running in practice to this day. <laughs> if we had. Man, it, it, it didn't matter if it didn't matter if we won that game by 40, those 27, we, we had this breakdown sh- like chart um, that you Stacy had and you talk about it. It didn't matter. What you did that game, how good you think you played, we were concerned about that breakdown chart because at the end of the day, it equates to wins and losses. No matter how good you think you were doing, man, 27, please. We've been we 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 probably would have taped and wouldn't even went into the locker room, just walked straight to the court and we knew what it was about to be. So what you say she would have said, Hey, you, you need well, he to make sure they turned it over 28 times, not 27. Would, you missed he you left some out on said, the floor. He wouldn't have said anything. We he, we probably would have walked in the gym and he probably would have been sitting up in the stands and we already knew what time it was. <laughs> just, uh, just on the line, we already knew what time it was. Cause you know, that's way too many times to you know to, to give the ball to the opponent. And then no, no, no. This is they did that. We turned them over. Right, right, right. That, no, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying that's way too many times for a team to give the ball mm-hmm. to an opponent. Yeah. To opponent. Yeah. I'm saying if we would have turned the ball over that many yeah. times, man, we would have been running. We still be running to this day. Well, and I have <laughs> a feeling like Jamie Dixon's going to be having. I, that's, this I, week. that's what I said. I said I know Jamie is so red in the face in the locker room at halftime. There's no way possible he would. <laughs> and you see, they responded. You know. They slowly yeah. walked it back down, and and you know we were in a dog fight to the end to come out of it. Uh, that would have win. Definitely. So coming up, we've got a big week in basketball. So this weekend, Kansas lost as well, and so we've got a home game, two home games against the Kansas teams. We got Wednesday night against Kansas State. And then Saturday, big home game against KU. Mm. And if we can pull those two out, we'll be sitting pretty well in the Big 12 standings. I think we're going to be five and two, six and two at some point at that point if we are able to pull those two games out. Any any thoughts on the upcoming Kansas and Kansas State games? Well, of course, we always want to you know, win every game, but the, these two teams, especially Kansas, is always an enjoyable win. Um, you know, no no shot to uh, Malachi 
and and you know his new journey. Hey. <laughs> uh, I but, uh, <laughs> but, Not uh, at all. <laughs> you know, you know how we feel about that that old rock chalk. So um to get a to get a W against them, of course we but we always know the Big Twelve and basketball is the toughest conference, the hardest conference, mm-hmm. and anything can can go one way or the other. I mean, I was talking to someone the other day and I tell them, you know, it's the reason why Iowa State has so many wins against the top twenty five you know, in the last however many years, because you have to come through the Hilton. It doesn't matter if you're number one or the 25th team, you have to come through Ames and you're just not getting a win in there, you know, most of the times. Uh, so that number doesn't mean anything when you come in there. It's always a tough road in the same way. I mean, going down to Kansas State would be a dog fight. I mean, I, I used mm-hmm. to hate to go to Manhattan because, you know, they had some big guys down there and, and – lips busted and all kind of different stuff after the game but you know it's it's definitely a competitive league and if we can get those two we'll be sitting good well and you're right any win in the big 12 is big and especially if you can win on the road and, and that's what's so amazing is that kansas lost at west virginia who is not really as highly regarded but yet we can go down and, and have a big game against and win against a top 20 ranked team at tcu and, and Ward is online, and he commented there in the, in the chat or in the comments. But you're right. We only played Kansas once, and we get them at home. So we really need to take advantage of that because that's going to that's gonna say a lot about how we uh, finish in the Big 12 standings by that one game at home. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it, that one game that we have to play against them, hopefully we can get that one at home, and then hopefully it don't don't see them again until the Big Twelve tournament. <laughs> you have to run into them one way, the other, another one yeah. somewhere down the road. But uh, you know, it's it's we got the draw of getting them at home first this year, and you know, go from that and and just continue to build off of that. Um, hopefully, you know, Tammy could get healthier and, and work his way back. You know, uh, the guys are, are starting to gel and play a lot, you know, t- more together now. And with the progression of that, you know, you don't want to see any kind of fallback. Well, and it was good, you know, with taming out to see a, a bunch of guys uh, step up. We saw Omaha Baloo get some good, some good quality minutes. He, not a lot of volume, but they were important minutes. And he came in and scored a couple of buckets that were impactful. Yeah. Uh, I found it interesting from a, and I know both of you guys love basketball, but seeing the the difference in how TJ brought the players in for this game. So a little bit of a different rotation as a result, which we would assume. And we had a lot of more three bigs. I, I, I've been used to seeing really four guard offense, and we seem to go to more of a two and that traditional three down low look, which I think had a, a difference for TCO that – I found that fun because now teams really have to adjust to us and we can go small. We can go big. Uh, We can go guard heavy. We can go big heavy. And I I think that's going to be a lot of fun because now teams are going to have to adjust to us the rest of the season. Yeah. You had, you know, you got to use the guys for what they're, what they're good at, not just a, a set rotation, whatever worked for that game. I mean, there were, you know, a few games where it was me, Paul Shirley and, you know, Stevie Johnson or, you know, Martin Rancic out on the floor. Um, there were some games where I played the five and Contrell Horton played the four, you know, with, yeah. with the size that he had. Like, whatever it is that's, that's going to be, there was a few times we ran him down there on the post and dropped it low. I mean, what you going to do to stop him? It's not about, you know, the rotation or whatever. You may play more this game or or less that game or whatever, but whatever works at that time, you have to adjust to it. And he, he did a pretty good job doing that. And, you know, we want to see more of it, of course. If, if for those that maybe aren't familiar with Cantrell Ward, how about how tall is Cantrell? He he wasn't exactly the the biggest guy on your team. No, I I would say about six six three six four. You know, but you know, oh, yeah. I was I mean, couldn't solid. stop him. Yeah, couldn't stop him. Was tough. was the strongest the strongest man in in Stevie. Um, you could shoot it, you can handle it. You know, was was tough off the dribble. Um, and, and again, if you ran into the post, what, what was you going to do to stop him down there 
that low on the post. Like he he really really and and I think I think him for you know coming to our team and helping us, helping me be a better player because man, I, to have a guard that, that was that strong, you just didn't see that you didn't see that often. And it, it it reminded me a lot of the OG, you know, Kenny Pratt that was at Iowa State when I first came into Iowa State, you know, mm-hmm. for a visit and matched up against KP. Like, man, it was the worst thing ever, the <laughs> worst nightmare ever in my life. And I, I promise you, I got back to school and I said, I got to get – when I got back to high school, I said, I got to get in the weight room because if that guy right there was moving me around, my hips, my back, my ankle, all of that was so sore from just a little <laughs> scrimmage with them guys. I had to get in this weight room. And then once we got to college, you know, got with Getty and was lifting stuff like that. Then my junior year, Kentrell came in and it was still like, man, this cat is strong as ever. And so like me, him and Stevie, you know, Tony Rampton, we were the ones that was doing the most lifting together. Paul was with, was with us. And of course, you know, Clint Varley, who was probably stronger than all of us put together. So, you know, we had, we had a good time to, uh, you know, being teammates and things like that. And we fed off of each other, but, Man, we we definitely had a team that was was reckoned with to be reckoned with in the Big Twelve, and you know all the credit goes to those guys for sure. So I, I see Chris has been mm-hmm. online grabbing some picks, and and Chris, if you could, uh, we're the NBA All Star Weekend is going to be heading towards or uh, to Minneapolis or to uh, Indianapolis. Sorry, got my Apples is wrong, <laughs> and they have a unique display set up in their airport to commemorate the upcoming uh, um, final or the uh, all-star weekend. I think I said final four all-star weekend. And uh, our friend Tyrese Halliburton uh, had a tweak of his hamstring. He has been out back and uh, the Pacers uh, uh, picked up a a new player from Toronto there. Uh, there it is. So there is a NBA court that is inside of the Indianapolis airport that is set up. That that looks like wow. A now, mm-hmm. if you guys are traveling through Indianapolis, do you grab a ball and start playing? Ooh, well, I don't know what part of playing are you going are you going to say it is. You know, if it's a ball around and shoot a couple of times, you might get a shot. That's right, about it. Get a shot up and, <laughs> and, and like Obama, if that first one go in, I'm gonna walk off and. Say that's, that's what it. I do. Hey, <laughs> that's about all you leave on the make, baby. Leave <laughs> on the make. That's it. <laughs> now, now, Junior with me, he probably tried to do a little bit more, but no, nah, not me. <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah, I'm Brett, you got a new hip. You see, you're all ready to go. I, you'd be a monster <laughs> down there. I would. Are you I'll more of a three point guy? That's about it. Are you, I'm a, I'm are you more of a three point guy, or do you like to hang out on the post? I'm a no. Nah. Well, now no. I mean, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller guy can handle the rock a little <laughs> bit to get to the cup, but now, now I'm a pure shooter. The older you get, all you do is shoot. <laughs> that's all. That's all you do. <laughs> I'm not, that's all I'm you not do. doing nothing else. Catch yes, me oh, over in this corner. Want to play some pickup? I will go, go from the top of this key to the top of that one, and that is it. Yeah, I'm not getting no further. That is it. <laughs> Maybe the top of key to half court. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of help, help, help. Be a whole lot of help defense. Y'all gotta the, figure it out. Depending well, if there's on anything you shot, can find at a good shot, airport, bro. it's the Sabaros Pizza Place, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, I like I like in my back in my hometown or in Shreveport, the airport has the picture of that first uh independent bowl that we won down there. So I love mm. flying back into typically a lot of times I fly into Dallas. Because I'm able to rent a, a bigger vehicle, and the smaller airport in Shreveport don't have like the bigger vehicles when I'm flying on. So, so a lot of times I fly into Dallas and I just drive over. But if I fly into Shreveport, I love right before I come around that corner, that picture is there. Really? Um, the, yeah. The Iowa State against Alabama yeah. game. Really? I take I take a picture. I take a picture of it uh, with myself there every time I I go through there. Every single time, and I That's post. Dope. it. Yeah. Yep. All right, so on your next trip through, you're going to have to 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 tweet that X that out so we all yep. can see it. I think uh, it's definitely there. That's a lot of good memories down there. Yep. <laughs> so, ironically, both the men and women's basketball teams are ranked 24th. Um, not sure how that's going to shake out with the new rankings uh, coming out tomorrow. The women um, had be- had beaten West Virginia 
at some point in the game, they were down 19 and came back to win. Um, I think that was Coach Finley's uh, 600th win as well. Uh, then they came back and beat number four Baylor. And if you know anything about women's basketball in Baylor, uh, that that's a, a team that we continue to um, play very well. Great program. Um, and, and so that's a big win for, for Iowa State women. And Audie Crooks was named the Big 12 Player of the Week. Not only was she freshman, or is she a freshman, but to be a freshman and named Big Play, a Big 12 Player of the Week, I think that uh, speaks very highly of her. Um, in fact, between her and, and Addie Brown, the two of them have been named uh, Big 12 Player, uh, excuse me, Freshman of the Week three times thus far this season. So certainly the future looks bright for the Iowa State women uh, basketball team. Um, and I think Audi, uh, Audi is uh, averaging 18 points plus in Big 12 play. And, boy, she, she's been looking really good uh, out on the court. And they have some big uh, games coming up this week. So, obviously, we talked a little bit about the men playing Wednesday night uh, against Kansas State. The women are playing at Kansas Wednesday night. And then they have a game at West Virginia on Saturday, uh, the same day that the Iowa State men are playing uh, at Hilton against Kansas. So overall big week of uh, big 12 uh, uh, basketball coming up. Um, we talked a little bit offline before we jumped on the show, but the women uh, picked up an, uh, an easy win TCU forfeit uh, mm-hmm. due to lack of numbers. And again, I don't understand that because you carry 15 scholarships. You would think that you would have some players that would be active or be eligible to play. And rumor has it that, some of those, they just, they want a red shirt, which seems like, why would you do that? You If you got bodies, why not play them, right? And we would have went out there with, with six. Come on, like, you know, with our starters and whoever going to come off the bench, we would have went out there with them six. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if it's, if it's something that they're trying to do or some kind of plan, but, you know, it's, it's, it's very confusing to see that happen, but we'll take the duck. Is that that portal is a is a thing for basketball too, right? Can the girls jump in the portal and do all the? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah, they want a red shirt because they don't want to lose a year. Because a lot of those, a lot of them girls, are guaranteed are going to hop in the portal. Yeah, there's no way you so. forfeit a game in the season if you're not already thinking about next year because you're trying to get out of there. That's crazy. Yeah. Could you imagine being one of those players and and your team is faced with a forfeit, whether it's football or basketball? I mean, that I, I don't think I'd be very happy about that myself. Opportunity loss, man. Right. It's an opportunity loss. Well, like I said, we would we would have gone out there with six players. They, what they don't want to play? Saying, hey, uh, you you don't you station ain't highly want to take me out to the game anyway, so I know I wasn't coming out. <laughs> so hey. <laughs> Five stars, do you think Mike Nurse would have wanted to come out? Man, please. Probably if anybody, Jamal Tinsley would have raised his hand to come out. But he wouldn't have came out. <laughs> he would have came out because you're the point guard. But, man, please, we would have been, hey, roll the ball out there. Had, had, had some walk on. I mean, some uh, like the the uh, managers on the on the bench waving towels to, to fill the seats <laughs> up. But we would have been on that floor. That's sure. It. Hey, Brent, we, we missed you earlier. One question, um, you know, there's some rumors going around about Coach Campbell and tied in maybe interviewing for that Washington job. Did you, did you have any thoughts on that or, you know, as a player, is that something that you, you think that the players are talking about, even if it's after the seat, you know, after the fact that he's, uh, they filled the position and is there any discussion going on in that locker room, do you think? No, nah, I doubt it, man. I think it's all it was all put to bed. You know, once he uh the position was filled, he's still there. Even if he does go and interview, I mean it's 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 good for coaches to interview um at spots if they ever feel like possibly taking that next step. And maybe the, the next step for him will be the NFL when his time comes. So, you know, getting an interviewed just like getting practice. But I, you know, I think Cam has got a lot left to prove um at Iowa State and I think it'd be hard for him to leave what what he's kind of building and been building so far. So I don't think there's any chatter, any of that going on, man. He's bought in. I think the guys believe he's bought in too. So 
Well, it looks like we've got a new guy coming in from uh, one of the military services. All I saw was a one-handed catch, and I said, that's our guy. I That's going to be fun. I don't know if you saw his highlight, but I reached up with one hand, either. caught it, and pulled it in, and I thought, okay, this is going to be fun. Rocco's going to be cooking next year for sure. Oh, man, yeah, we're way too young. I think we'll be perfectly fine. My opinion. We got way too many young guys, got a ton of playing experience. We'll be good. Mm-hmm. Super solid. All right. Uh any last words as we wrap up tonight's show? No, I mean, can't hardly, you know, like like we said, we got one guy on the Lions, one guy on the 49. This can't really go for it either or. You know, we got one guy for the Ravens that we can definitely pull for. Um, yep. so you know, I, I guess we're guaranteed to, to possibly get somebody in somewhere, but uh, um, we would like to have two more than one. <laughs> right. But, uh, it is what right. it is. <clears throat> I'm just, you know, looking forward to enjoying some games this week. Um, you know, good luck to the all of the, the players. This is going to be out playing and, you know. Yep, if you can get up to Hilton and, and see the, the Iowa State men play against Kansas State on Wednesday, Kansas on Saturday, and again, uh, if you're uh, able to get down to uh, um, lots of women play, they play Wednesday then at Kansas and then Saturday at West Virginia. Cheer those Cyclones on. We've got some important games this week for both men's and women's programs. We've got uh, the football games next weekend with a lot of, a lot of Cyclones on those uh, on the sidelines that will be playing. Uh, we've got some great shows coming up. Chris, I don't know if you're still on, if you want to talk a little bit about some of those, but, but we've got Old Man Strength that's coming up tomorrow night in place of the former schedule for Side of the Storm. There he is, Chris. You want to give us a lowdown on what's coming up uh, for the Three Beards Media shows? Yep, it's uh, going to be a pretty busy week. Uh, we have a new episode of Old Man Strength tomorrow night. Uh, Aaron Wall is the new co-host of Old Man Strength. Uh, Sergeant Paul Parizic will be on False Starts uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, the Three Blind Refs are back Wednesday, and then Thursday is Hawks Eye View, and then Friday is Ball Don't Lie. So we've got a, a full schedule, so we are raring to go. So, and uh, uh, Brent, we have uh, on February 13th, we have a famous chef on Old Man Strength, Chef Robert Irvine. Oh, uh, wow, that's a swallow chef, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's he uh, I finagled a, an interview with him, so he'll be on Old Man Strength on February 13th. I'm pretty stoked, so, yeah. I had so. no idea he was on all these shows. I only know him from, from the protein bars that I eat all the time. I, this was <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wait, he's on TV? Yeah. yeah. No I, I love food, man, so I watch all those cooking shows. So That's right. Know, right. Great for you know what? Speaking of that, we, we, should, give, we should give Brent uh, a shout-out uh, for Coaches Collages. Mm-hmm. Support local. Uh, I hit him up on Saturday morning. It was, uh, as usual, uh, the best thing I've eaten. So, <laughs> so, Love the uh, sound of that. It is. Yeah. It's really good. I, I shied away from the Astro because I tend to order two of those and then I have to take a nap. So, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, That's why it's not uh, comfort food, you know what I mean? Right. Seriously, it's, it's great stuff. So, if you are out and about, go, go hit up uh, Coach. And don't forget to support Gravitate Coworking and, of course, our friends at Revelton Distillery. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us for another episode of In the Side of the Storm. We will see you next week. Take care.